In this tutorial, we're gonna look at an annotation called configuration properties. This is a specific annotation related to configuration, pulling up configuration values from property files. And this is specifically useful when you have a group of configuration values that you wanna pull up at once and make it available throughout the application. So we've looked at the at value annotation to pull up properties from application.properties file in your Spring Boot microservices. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you another cool way and actually a slightly more powerful way to pull up properties from a properties file. And uh, the end of this video will also tell you when to use what, when to use the at value annotation and when to use this new annotation I'm gonna show you called at configuration properties. Okay, so assume that you have a properties file which contains a bunch of keys that look something like this, all right? These are database connection properties. You have db.connection, and then you have this map of values here. You have db.host is the host name, db.port is the port name, and you have a bunch more, right? They all have this prefix, db. So what you can do with this specific annotation, the configuration properties annotation is, define a new spring bean, and say, rather than have each value injected one by one, Okay, you're gonna define a bean and have that bean be pre-populated with all the values. Okay, so let me call this db settings. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say this class should contain all the values that have these properties that start with db dot. Okay, so the way to do this is I'm gonna make it handy for Spring to inject those values to bean by creating these member variables in db settings. I'm gonna create private string uh, connection. Uh, I can create it as a map, but I'm just gonna create it as a string for now. Um, host and port. I actually make this an int and uh, I get that checking out of the box. So I'm going to create getters and setters. You have to create getters and setters because Spring needs to be able to inject these values here. So you, what you have here is nothing special. You just have a Java class, which has the same shape as the values that you wanna read over here, okay? But you don't have any mapping yet. In order to specify the mapping, you provide this annotation called configuration properties, okay? This is from this package. And here I can say, what is the prefix that I need this to look up the values from? Because I don't want it to look up from everything over here. I want it to look up from the prefix db dot. Now this allows Spring to do a couple of things. First, it's gonna look for all the properties that start with db, okay? Anything that starts with db dot, it's gonna look up all those properties. And if any of those properties have a name that matches these member variables, it's gonna actually take that value, create a new instance of this DB settings class, and inject those values to these corresponding member variables automatically. And I'm gonna tell Spring that this is a at configuration so that it knows to create this as a bean. Now that I do this, it's gonna make this as a Spring bean. So in your controller, you can get all those values in one shot by doing a private db settings, db settings, and then just auto wire this thing. It's as simple as that. So you get access to all those values in one shot over here, okay? I'm going to print that value instead of this over here. I'm gonna do a db settings dot get connection. dot get host. Well, that should be enough. Let's see how this works now. I'm gonna restart my server. And here you see those values are getting picked up. Now, another thing that this allows us to do is, let's say I were to change this db.port to foo, okay? Now, I have mapped db.port to an integer here. Right, I'm telling Spring to take that value and assign it to an integer. Now notice what happens when I restart this. When the application starts up and the Spring container starts up, it actually errors out right there. It says, 
the property db.port, the value is foo, so it failed to convert string to integer. So you essentially get type safety in your configuration. Okay, so if somebody were to make a configuration change and map um, an int to something else, which is not an integer, you catch that during application startup time and not sometime when the application runs and some user faces that issue. Well, no, you get to know this issue up front, right? So that's super cool. So now that you have two ways to get property values from your properties file into your Java code, one is using the at value annotation and the other is using auto-wired configuration beans, when do you use what? Well, there are a couple of suggestions that I would provide in order to help you choose. If you have one-off values like this, you have a single message and you have a single list, for example, then it makes sense to create an at value annotation. And if you have a one-off usage, if a message or a property is used in just one place, even then it makes sense to use the at value annotation. The benefit of using configuration properties is twofold. One, you get to group values together for something like DB connection details. It makes sense that all these different values are together and bundled into one Java instance. That's one reason why you would want to use configuration properties over values. The second reason you would want to use configuration properties is because of the fact that this ends up as a spring bean. If you have a need where you have a bunch of properties that needs to be used in multiple different locations in your code, okay, something like database connection. Database connection details might be used in multiple different places in your code. In that situation, there's actually a benefit to creating configuration properties and having this be a spring bean because you can essentially just auto wire that bean rather than have the same at values in multiple different places. So that's another reason why you would want to use configuration properties over values if your property values are going to be reused in multiple different places and, and used by multiple different services and controllers in your code. The next thing I want to show you is something called Spring Boot Actuator. Spring Boot Actuator is kind of an additional dependency you can throw into your Spring Boot applications. It has a lot of other features, but in this particular tutorial, I want to highlight a specific endpoint that it exposes in your Spring Boot applications. What it does is it exposes a specific REST endpoint where you can get all the configuration properties that is exposed in your app, either by yourself or by the Spring Framework itself. So here's how you add the dependency to Spring Boot Actuator. What you do is you go to your pom.xml file and uh, add this dependency. It is also a starter dependency like Spring Boot Starter Web. I'm just gonna copy this over and call this Spring Boot Starter Actuator and enable the import. And just with this, you now have the dependency added to your application. But Spring Boot Actuator does not expose all the endpoints automatically, right? There are a lot of sensitive information that it exposes. So you have to tell Spring Boot Actuator you're okay with exposing sensitive information. Again, this is not something you want to do in a production system, but since we are testing this out, I'm going to say, hey, Spring Boot Actuator, enable all endpoints because I want to see what you've got. I want to see the endpoint and see the configuration properties that this application exposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the property file here and I am going to add this specific configuration called management endpoints web exposure include. Okay, now what this does is it basically says I want all of the configuration that is in this management endpoints, like all the endpoints that Actuator provides, I want them to expose all of them, right? At this point, it's development instance again, I don't care, but in a production system, you don't wanna be doing this. What I have put here as a star basically says, expose everything. You can selectively export certain, expose certain endpoints, but I'm not gonna care about that in this particular course. I'm gonna say, expose everything. All right, now I can access localhost 8080 slash actuator slash config props. Now what this does is it exposes, well it shows all the config prop values that have been exposed. And here you see there are a whole lot of them which you didn't write. These are all the config props that are available in Spring Boot itself.
okay so these are spring native config props that you can configure you can take any of these configuration properties and add them into your property file okay let's search for the ones that we have entered let's look for connection so here you see there is our connection configuration along with the value right so this is the value that we've configured so not only does it show the configuration that's available it also shows what the value that is currently set so you can take any of those configuration values that you've seen take the property paste it into your properties file and configure it with a different value now you have essentially given new configuration data to the framework if it's not your property of course you've given different configuration data to the framework and that affects the way the framework works right so these are all the available configuration properties that spring is exposed for you to configure you don't have to do this that's there if you want to use it now when you have properties like this especially the one that you're seeing over here server org spring framework boot auto configure web server properties that's a pretty long property value and you have a lot of those keys which which run on a.b.c.d and a lot of those things are common when you see a lot of those property files you will probably encounter a point where it gets too verbose and it's too messy and you don't know what's where and it's like it's a lot of text in your property files that's where yaml configuration is going to help you so in this next tutorial i'll show you what yaml is and how it's different from property files so see you in the next tutorial